welcome to Little Literati. I'm Jess and this is my third quarter book haul video. So this is covering the months July, August, and September. So let's go ahead and get started. July was my smallest book haul month so far this summer. Um, I received Ghostly Echoes, which is the third book in the Jacoby series. I had pre-ordered it and so that it arrived in July. I had also pre-ordered The Secret of the India Orchid, which is one of the proper romance books. It is a companion book, not exactly a direct sequel, but definitely has some of the same characters as My Third Gentleman by Nancy Campbell Allen. And so I've been really excited about this since I had really enjoyed that book. And then it arrived and it is a half an inch narrower and shorter than all the other books in the series. And it was a bad day anyway, I was not feeling well, and so this kind of ruined the rest of that day. And honestly, I haven't picked it up to read it since. So it's been on my shelf for a few months now, and I don't know, it just it really turned me off. In fact, I went and picked up from a store the last book in the Proper Romance line, which is The Vicar's Daughter by Josie Kilpack, and you can see how it's definitely smaller and narrower. And so with all of these books on my shelf, The Secret of the Indie Orchid definitely looks out of place and kind of gap-toothed, which just really makes my skin crawl when I look at it. It really bugs me, and so I haven't been able to bring myself to pick it up and read it yet. I actually haven't brought myself to read The Vicar's Daughter yet either, but I'm that's higher on my list of priorities actually than The Secret of the Indie Orchid, which is disappointing because I was looking forward to the story. Anyway, um, the book for Fairy Loot in July was Daughter of the Burning City um, by Amanda Foody. So, like I said, not a very big month. I probably subconsciously anyway got turned off by that orca, orchid book. And then in, sep or in August, I did a little bit better. I finally bought for Darkness Shows the Stars and Across the Star Swept Sea um, and add those to my classic adaptations shelf. And I also had mentioned in a previous book haul video that I had bought the Grisha verse books, the um, Shadow and Bone, Siege and Storm, and Ruin and Rising, and then pretty much right after I bought them they came out with new covers. So I bought the books with the new covers. I like the font, I think it's really cool. And I like the covers a lot better on these, and they're shimmery. And it's great because all the bonus material is still in these copies as well as the uh, set that I had bought before. So I gave my sister the previous set, which I hadn't even really cracked at all, and gave those to her for her birthday when she came to visit at the beginning of September, and um, bought myself these. So I like them, they're pretty, and they're going to match then eventually the paperbacks of Six of Crows and then Crooked Kingdom because it'll have all the same fonts and everything. So I think they'll look really pretty on my shelf. And then for my subscription box books, I received Wicked Like a Wildfire by Fairy Loot in, or by Lana Popovic, or I don't know how you pronounce that exactly, but anyway, I received this from Fairy Loot in August, and then I received The Hearts We Sold from Alcrate by Emily Lloyd-Jones. And now we get to September, which is one, by far the biggest haul month for this uh, quarter. So I we went at the beginning of September, we drove down to Texas for my niece's wedding, and while we were down there, uh, my brother-in-law lives really pretty close to a half price books which we don't have in the state where I live and so I begged my husband to let me go in and peruse and I was able to find some things that I had been looking for for months if not years so first of all I found the Rune Lords which is book one in the Rune Lords series by David Farland I have books two through I think five and I have been looking for I think three years now. I've been looking in every used bookstore I go to for book one, which is, I think is the best one and is my favorite, and have not found it. I found I keep finding books two, I keep finding book three, I keep finding book four, but never book one. So I walked in there and 
they had book one and so I grabbed it and it was half price books so I was able to get it for really pretty cheap so yay I now have the beginning of the series and my shelf looks more complete there's not that hole sitting there glaring at me every time I look at it I also got book four in the Air Affair series something rotten and so now and it is in the same edition the same size as the first three books that I have and so I'm looking forward to being able to read books one through four in the Thursday Next series with Something Rotten, also from the Half Price Books. I was able to find for my kids, which I'm not putting in this book, all these are just my books that I do these for, but I finally also found, um, when I was a kid, I really loved the Bailey School Kids books when I was in elementary school, and so I bought for my daughter's, I think, fifth birthday, fourth birthday, my oldest, um, so a year or so ago, I bought her this huge haul that I could find on eBay of the original covers, not the new kind of, I think they look a little bit grotesque, but anyway, I, I really like the original covers and I bought her books one through 25, except for book 19. I could not find Gargoyles Don't Drive School Buses anywhere. And again, I would look and every time I'd go to my local bookstore, I would just see if maybe they had received a new copy. It was never there. I checked other used bookstores in my area. It was never there. I checked the library sales. They never had it. And so I walked into that half price books and it was on the shelf and it was in the original cover and so I bought it and so we added that to my collection as well. So yay, we have books one through 25, all in a row. I also found this copy of Clockwork Princess, which I will confess I have not read anything by Cassandra Clare, but um, I've had friends and family tell me that if I'm going to read them, given my proclivity for the Victorian era, 19th century lit, all of that, that I'd probably really enjoy the Infernal Devices series. And so this is book three, and I really liked the, the spine cover art. And I knew that if I could find books one and two, then they will make a picture. Um, I just found book three, but I figured, well, for half price, it was really pretty cheap. And so I might actually, if I own the book, might actually get around to reading the series sometime soonish. So I thought I'd go ahead and pick this up and then hopefully just keep my eyes peeled for books one and two whenever I get a chance. So those were all from Half Price Books in Texas. And then when I got back, I had a couple of pre-orders waiting for me. I had pre-ordered Frost Like Night, which is book three, and the last book in the Snow Like Ashes trilogy by Sarah Roche. And so I now have that complete series. And I also pre-ordered Empire of Storms in paperback by Sarah J. Mass. And this is book five, not counting the prequel. And um, so I had been really looking forward to this as well. And so it finally arrived and I was very eager to get my hands on it and hoping that the mail post office people hadn't just shoved my packages into the post office box and stuff other stuff on top of it while we were gone, even though we put our mail on hold. They still somehow missed a day and shoved a bunch of stuff in there. But my book looks great and so I was happy. And it was there waiting for me when we got back from our trip. So yay, Empire of Storms. Um, then I went back to my local used bookstore and just kind of, oh, and the, of course, I went back to my local used bookstore and they had Gargoyles Don't Drive School Buses. In fact, they had two copies. Go figure. So, oh well, I was able to get a copy and I was happy. And then from that store, I bought Entwined, which by Heather Dixon, which is a fairy tale retelling of um, the 12 Dancing Princesses. And so I haven't read this yet, but I had read really good things about it and a lot of people had really enjoyed it. So I wanted to add this to my fairy tale retellings shelf. And even though I was kind of grumpy about them finally having a book local to me that I'd been looking for for a couple of years, I was appeased because I found Fable Haven that I've been looking for for several years. I've had books two through five, the rest of the series in hardcover with the original covers for several years now, since I went to a, a library sale, I think three years ago, picked up books two through five and have not been able to find the original first book since. And I've looked every time I've gone into any used bookstore, I've looked for the first book in the ha Fable Haven series, wanting it in this cover, in this, with this art, so it all matches and all looks uniform on my shelf. And it has eluded me for three years. And so I walked into that store and I found it and I picked it up and I was like, I don't even care if I go over budget this time, I'm buying this book because I will never find it again if I don't pick it up now. So we finally have the complete series of Fablehaven on our shelf. And I had had them on my audio book shelf 
for my kids to listen to when we went on a trip, but I still think it'd be kind of fun to have the whole series that they can pick up and read anytime they want as well. So yay, we have Fable Haven now. These next few books I bought from um, eBay and thrift books online. So I have books one through five of the um, Richard Castle books, the Nikki Heat series, because Castle was my favorite TV show until the till the end of the seventh season, seventh, eighth season, I pretend it didn't happen. In my head, it didn't happen because the seventh season wrapped it all up really nicely and then the eighth season was crap. So I pretend it didn't happen. But I have books one through five that Richard Castle wrote. And so I bought off of eBay, The Ultimate Storm, which is the first three prequel, or um, not prequel, their uh, sort of short story novella length. So they were available in ebook version. And so they finally just brought the three together and put them in a single binding. But they were, it was like $100 everywhere to get this, but, or like at least it was, it was expensive to get this book. And I was like, that's ridiculous. And so I found one copy on eBay that was only 20. And I was like, well, it's still a little high for a used book, but whatever. And it was like a, an ex library copy. I was like, I don't even care. If that's, the, if that's what it takes for me to get a book that's not 50 plus dollars and up to a hundred in some cases, I will grab this while I can. So I bought Ultimate Storm by Richard Castle. And then I also bought the next two books in the Nikki Heat series. So Driving Heat and Raging Heat. And the other two Storm books that I could find, which are Wild Storm and Stormfront. So I know that there are a couple more Nikki Heat ones. There's High Heat, and then there's one that's, um, I think it's Heat Storm, and have, it's a crossover between the two series. So I haven't read those either yet, obviously. Um, but eventually, when they are not horrifically expensive either, I will get those and add those to my collection. All right, I'm hoping that they'll stay and not fall over on me. So my subscription box books for the month of September from Fairy Loot, I got Even the Darkest Stars by Heather Fawcett. And then from Owl Crate, I received Before She Ignites by Jody Meadows. And I'm really excited for both of those. Okay, let's hope that, that doesn't kill me. All right, so my favorite books that I got in September, by far, of all the books, and I got a huge stack in September, but by far my favorite books from this quarter's book haul, are these gorgeous leather-bound copies of the Belgariad by David Eddings. Um, so a little story about these. So David Eddings is my favorite fantasy author. He has been since I was 12. And so we moved into my in-law's basement a few years ago, and my father-in-law had these gorgeous leather-bound editions of the Belgariad, which is my favorite series by David Eddings, um, sitting on a shelf in plastic wrap, and they were gorgeous. And I was telling Todd, I was like, I would love to have a copy. If your if your parents die, I would love to be able to. And that sounds terrible. But like I would love to be able to inherit those. <laughs> I don't care about anything else. I don't care about the house or anything else. I want those books. And my husband just kind of laughed and said, Yeah, well, we'll see. And so there, I've been secretly lusting after them for three years now. And I've looked for copies of my own, and they are thousands of dollars which is horrifying, I think. But I mean, the first one is actually signed by David Eddings and he died the year that we got married. So he's been gone for eight years now. And so, I mean, I get that they are, and they're beautiful, they're bound with real gold and they're gorgeous, but still thousands of dollars. And I was like, well, someday, someday, someday I'll be able to have copies of my own. So their base, my in-law's basement flooded this past year. And so my brother-in-law was over helping them pull everything out of the basement and uh, clearing everything out so that they could fix the foundation and try to lift the house. It's a whole big story. Anyway, so he took these home along with the leather bound Isaac Asimov's and I feel like there were a couple Heinlein's maybe. Anyway, so he took like a bunch of books home and I was like, well, I'm never gonna be able to get my grubby hands on those then because he's already just snagged them. And so I was trying to figure out a way to like, circumvent him. I was like, maybe I could offer my father-in-law like a check for a couple thousand dollars and just like ask him not to cash it yet until I save up enough or something. I don't know, pay off in, in increments and then just like snag them be like, well, I bought them from my father-in-law. So can I please have them and, you know, try to work around it and everything. And so we were down for my niece's wedding and my brother-in-law came to me and said, 
So I know that you really love the David Eddings books. And I don't know if you know, but I actually have them at my house. I'm like, yes, I know. I've been eyeing them every time I go and visit you. He says, well, I know that you really, really love these. And so I want to give them to you. And I started crying right there, gave him a huge hug. And I was like, thank you. That's amazing. He's like, as long as you're okay with me keeping the Isaac, the Isaac Asimov books. I'm like, I don't care. My husband likes them, but I don't care. Like, I'll get him some other nice things too, but thank you for letting me have these. So we came back from the wedding and um, he brought these over and actually I went and got them and he gave them to me. So now I have my very own copies that I didn't have to spend thousands of dollars for. So I love them. I almost love them more than my children. And in fact, I've told my children, we don't touch these copies. These are mommy's copies. Mommy has paperbacks so that when you're in middle school and high school and you want to read them, you can read the paperbacks. You do not touch mommy's nice leather bound gold copies. So they are my favorite books that I got this quarter. I love them so much, but they're gorgeous. So there's Pawn of Prophecy, which is the signed one. There's Queen of Sorcery, book two. The Magician's Gambit, book three. Castle of Wizardry, book four. And Enchanter's Endgame, book five. And they go on my pretty mantle and look so gorgeous in my room. And I, every time I sit in this chair, I just look up at them and just smile because they're mine now so anyway so all told um i definitely got better as the months went along this summer uh all told this is 30 books that i received that i bought that just i got into my possession this quarter and so i love most of them i especially love of course these ones and i'm very look i'm very excited to add so many wonderful new books to my collection so let me know what you got this quarter. Let me know if there's anything here that you've read or that you have or that you love and that you're interested in reading for yourself. And we will see you in the next video.